Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now, I'm really super excited about our show today. We are interviewing Howard Von S. Now, Howard Von S and I have a lot in common. We're both authors and we are both yoga teachers. So we're going to hear all about this. This will now be my 29th year teaching yoga. I'm age 64. I still teach nine times a week. And Howard Van Ness, how long have you taught yoga? I've been teaching yoga 26 years. It's just awesome. I tell all the younger teachers, just don't stop. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Now, Howard Von Ness is the author, the co-author of a wonderful book called Yoga for Better Balance. And today in our interview, we're going to be talking about how you can have better balance. And you can find out more about Howard Von Ness and his wonderful work at his website, letsdoyoga.com. Welcome, Howard Von Ness. Thank you, Catherine. Great to be here with you today. Now, when people talk about fitness, they usually talk, think about strength or flexibility or power or coordination or core stability. But one aspect of fitness that is often overlooked and rarely discussed is balance. Now, a recent study in the British Journal of Sports Medicine found through scientific research that if you are unable to stand on one leg for 10 seconds in middle to later life, then that is an indicator that your risk of dying from all causes over the next 10 years is double. Wow. Wow. So you want to get good at balance. And if you can't balance, that is an indicator that you're not as healthy as you could be. Now, Howard Van asked, what inspired you to write a book about helping people improve their balance? Great question. So um, as I have been teaching, my population, my student base has been getting a little bit older. And uh, a lot of my students have been asking me about balance. And when I teach balance postures in a class, you know, I could see people having some struggles with them. Um, and my co-author, Dr. Harvey, uh, who's a chiropractor, uh, he's also seeing this in his population when people come in and he's doing his testing with them. He's seeing a lot of balance issues. Um, and if all that wasn't enough, there aren't that many great yoga books about balance, unfortunately. So we saw a, a need and a hole in the market so we decided to, to write this book. So very important. Now, as we, we both taught yoga for decades, <laughs> which would basically mean that we're yoga master teachers, right? And one of my many certifications in yoga, I studied with Dr. Lauren Fishman, who's an expert on yoga for osteoporosis. And if you have osteopenia and osteoporosis and poor balance, and then you fall, you know, that, that's when we're looking at very serious health complications. And I believe the scientific research shows that older people who fall and break their hip, 25% of them never recover. So what Howard Von Ness is talking about and what we're going to be talking about today is very, very important. <laughs> yeah, actually, Catherine, the numbers that I've seen are much higher. And that if you fall and break a hip, your chances are about 50% that you're going to return to your life as it was before. With a lot of people ending up in nursing homes and many people just die because uh, of the injury. Especially right. if they have osteoporosis. Yes. It, go ahead. One of my nine yoga classes that I teach every week is yoga for osteoporosis. And we oh, always great. start the class with balance work, right? Yeah. And what that looks like is I'll have everybody stand with one foot on a yoga block. And that 
and then dangle their leg. And this actually simulates walking up and down stairs. But we want to hear from Howard Von Ness, the author of the wonderful book, Yoga for Better Balance. So Howard Von Ness, so you're in the US as am I, what is the prevalence of balance related falls in the United States? What are the statistics show? Yeah, about 3 million people a year um, have a have a balance injury. Um, and about 800,000 of those people uh, will end up in the emergency room. So pretty high numbers. Wow, that is a lot. Yeah, and once you reach uh, 50, you're, the incidence of um, having a fall injury dramatically increase. So, um, you know, once you're 50, 60, 70, 80, you know, for every decade you're on the earth, the incidence increases um, dramatically. So um, it's really important that people start, you know, at any age, really, whether you're 30, 40, or 50, 60, 70, wherever you are, it's really important to start to working on balance. Excellent. Now, Howard Von Ness, author of Yoga for Better Balance, what actually causes balance problems? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, <clears throat> the number one reason is lack of use, uh, which translates into lack, things that you mentioned earlier, lack of, lack of strength, lack of, lack of flexibility, uh, lack of alignment in the body. Um, and all these things contribute to poor proprioception, knowing where you are in space and time. So, or not in time, but in space. <laughs> so if you're, um, if you could imagine not using muscles, they tend to atrophy over time, they get weak. So you don't have that strength in your body, you don't have the confidence in your body, even just getting up out of a chair and starting to walk, it's easy for somebody to fall down. And, it, and if you don't have that strength and flexibility in your body, and you should fall, um, then the outcomes are not that great, as we mentioned. But if you have strength in your body and you fall, you can recover from that, or your chances of recovery are much better. Additionally, um, there's a lot of other issues why people have balance issues. It could be high blood pressure, low blood pressure. It could be eye issues or ear issues. Um, it could be stress. I mean, we've all experienced stress where we get distracted and the next thing you know, we're tripping over something. Uh, it could be as uh, simple as uh, worn shoes uh, or, you know, pronation, overpronation in the feet. Um, so it could be a myriad of reasons, um, but I think the number one prevalent reason is simply a lack of use uh, or a lack of strength and flexibility, which often translates from a lack of use. Great information. And to everything that you have said, I would like to add my this observation. So I'm now 64, over 30 years experience full-time in natural healing. And my first 10 years in healing was actually learning about how to heal the brain. Now, what a lot of people don't know is you have something called your vestibular system. Now, your, your vestibular system helps you balance. And it's basically in your inner ear. And what a lot of people don't know is that the vestibular system is the first sense to develop in the womb. And all your other senses are based on your vestibular system. So if you don't have a healthy vestibular system that affects your vision, 20%, over 20% of your vision is affected by, uh, is related to your vestibular system. So if I don't have good balance, I don't know where I am in space and I'm using my eyes, I'm holding on and stressing my vis visual system rather than using my core to maintain my place in space. So I actually do and have for decades healings on the vestibular system. And Wonderful. lots of people have vestibular issues and don't even realize it, right? Yeah. Um, I remember years ago, I had a client who, um, I had worked with at that point for over 10 years, but she went through this period where she just kept falling down. <laughs> she would just be like walking down the street and fall down, not even tripping. And before she came, I went into meditation because this is somebody that I knew really well. And I received guidance that she'd had polio as a child. And this was something I'd never even known. 
And she came, I talked to her about that. And she said, oh yeah, I had a mild case of polio as a child and it affected her vestibular system. So some people just intrinsically don't have good balance and it could have been related to your development in utero, in the womb, or due to childhood issues. Now, Howard Van Ness, why should we be concerned about balance? Why is that important to us? Yeah, well, we've kind of touched on part of the reason already is, you know, the, the risk of having a fall, which could result in, you know, some pretty traumatic outcomes. Um, and um, a lot of the people that I meet that have balance issues, uh, lack a certain confidence in their body. And when you start to have that lack of confidence in your body, then the choices that you can make in your life start to become smaller and smaller, the possibilities of your life. You're nervous about traveling. You're nervous about picking up your kid or carrying groceries from the store or, or doing some activity that you might lo otherwise love because you're not feeling confident enough in your body. You're afraid that you're going to fall. So that starts to really limit your world. And I think that is a big reason why, other than actually falling and, and the outcomes of that, why we want to be concerned with balance. And I also, I also want to mention, you know, as a yoga teacher, you know, there's a whole group of balanced postures, which are just fun to practice. It's good to challenge yourself that way. And they're a lot of fun. Wonderful. Now, um, and again, I, I would like to add also, I remember when I studied yoga for osteoporosis, one of the questions on the test was, if you fall, what are you most likely to break? And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, what's going to break when you fall? And the most common thing to break when you fall is actually your wrist, right? Your wrist, then your hip, and then your spine, right? Yeah, and, and collarbones. Too. And collarbones, yes. So my own mother, who's now 86, and I adore her, a couple of years ago, she was going to her needles point store. And she was so excited about getting her yarn that she didn't notice the uneven sidewalk and fell and broke her wrist. And I went down to Savannah, where I grew up, to take care of her afterwards and I'll never forget seeing the x-ray of her hand. And you, you know, the bones in your hand are so small. So if you think about breaking those, and she was in tremendous pain. Yeah. So it's incredibly painful. So Howard Van Oss, let's help our audience. Can you give some suggestions on um three simple balance exercises almost anybody can do to improve their balance. Absolutely. And before I get to that, I just want to say my 96-year-old mom had a fall also. And um, my, I remember getting the call from my sister uh, one afternoon saying, you know, mom fell. And, I, and, and knowing what I know, I just thought, oh my God, you know, this is it. It's over. She's in the hospital. She's going to be in a nursing home the rest of her life if she's lucky. And, um, and I asked the question, is she okay? Is she in the hospital? And, and my sister said, no, she is okay. And what a sense of relief that came over me because, you know, if you're 96 years old and frail and fall, there's, there's a little chance that you're going to recover from that. She was very lucky to, to not have busted a hip because she fell on her hip. So we, we count ourselves very lucky, but we went through something similar um, that you went through with your mom. So. Yes. And, you know, when you're two years old and you fall down or you're <laughs> and you fall down, you just roll on your bum. <laughs> That's right. Right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but again, when we're older, you can significantly hurt yourself. And I remember my dear mom, you know, had to be on pain medication and I slept in the bedroom next to her and I would, you know, put the timer for she could only have the pain medicine every four hours and about three hours and three and a half hours, she'd be like, is it time yet? Because she was in so much pain. So again, we want Howard Van Nuys and I want to help you so you don't go through what our mothers went through, right? Right. Yes. And my, okay. my mother eventually recovered, but she had, right. hand had to be in a cast. Um, and then she had to do physical therapy on her hands, which was also difficult. Yeah. It must have took a long time for her to recover. It did. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, one of the things that we know about connective tissue, 
which is the fascia. The fascia takes about six months to recover. Howard Van Nuys, from your experience of helping people with balance, if they break a bone, their hand, their hip, or their spine, how long does it take for bones to recover after a bad fall? Well, you know, it varies, and it varies a lot by age. And of course, the older you get, the longer it's going to take. And what I've seen you know, through my students in my classes, it could be six months, it could be a year, it could be two years, depending on the person, how fit they are, and what age they are. So um, it, it takes some time. And I also want to answer your question about, you know, what are three exercises that people can do? Um, so one exercise I really liked a lot um, is just standing in front of the wall doing uh, toe raises. So you're just standing in the wall, your fingertips are on the wall for a little support if you need it. And then you can just lift your heels up and down, up and down. You could do that about 10 times and then turn your toes in, do it again 10 times and then turn the toes out and again, do that 10 times. And this is working um, the entire leg from the foot all the way up through the hip and the core. So you're getting a lot of benefit from doing these. And I haven't seen anybody who can't do it unless they have, you know, a major foot issue. Um, so <clears throat> you're, you're building strength in your foot and your toes, which is really important because uh, over time, if you're not working your feet, in some way, you're starting to lose strength and, and, and flexibility in the feet. And what ends up happening is you start developing uh, all kinds of problems with the feet where you start to get pronation or supination or other issues in the feet, which, uh, you know, your foot is the, is the connection to the earth. You know, it, it's where you're getting, where balance starts physically, you know, it's at, at the ground level. So th this needs to be strong. And one great way to, to work the feet are with uh, uh, heel raises or toe raises. And, but it's also working the ankle joints, working the legs, the muscles in the legs and, and, and the core. So you're getting a lot of uh, benefit from that relatively simple and quick exercise. Um, the second exercise I really like is um, getting uh, just getting up out of the chair. So if you're sitting in a chair, you can put your hands on your shoulders um, or you can just use the sides of the chair if you need to. And you stand up and then you sit down and then you do that over and over again, say 10 or 20 times and, and then take a, a breath or two and do it again 10 or 20 times. And this is also working almost everything in your body. It's working your legs. It's working your core. Um, it's working your upper body a little bit and it's taking you through a range of motion and um, a lot of people fall down when they get out of a chair you know, when they get up from sitting because uh, they're, they're not standing fully. They're not sure where their body is. Uh, they trip over their feet. So this is a, a, not only helping to build uh, strength and flexibility and proprioception overall, but it's also um, teaching people to um, be very aware when they get up out of a chair um, before taking their next step. So uh, I, that is uh, of great value. And then the third thing, um, so, and, and just to back up for a moment, um, that movement is very much like a yoga posture we call it Utkatasana or chair pose. Um, so if you know Utkatasana, if you're a yogi and you're watching this and you, and you wanna do Utkatasana, you could do Utkatasana, you could just do that up and down uh, 15 or 20 times. If you're not familiar with yoga and um, or you're dealing with some kind of injury, um, then you could just use the chair. You sit in a chair and you stand up, and you come back down. Another way to do it is to hold on to a ledge of some sort and just sit down and use your hands on the ledge to come back up. So those are some variations. And then um, I really like tree pose um, because we can we get you standing on one leg. Uh, you could do this in front of a wall if you need to, or you could do it standing in the center of the room if you have that capacity. Um, but you could have your fingertips on the wall. And then um, you take, you know, let's say you stand on your left leg and you bring your right foot to your inner left thigh, or you could bring it to your calf. And then if you have a lot of issues um, that are preventing you from doing that, you could just simply turn your right foot out and bring your right heel onto your left ankle, which gives you the feeling of tree pose. It's a starting tree pose, let's call it, a seedling tree pose, let's call it, um, before you do the, the tree pose. So like you, I teach one class a week that is uh, for seniors, and I, I take them through that kind of sequence. I have them do the, um, the heel raises. Uh, I have them stand on one leg, and then I have them bring their right heel onto their ankle, and then for those that are ready, we take the leg a little higher onto the calf or the thigh. So there's a nice building sequence for them.
Great information. And with that, let's take a break and listen to a message from one of our commercial sponsors here at UK Health Radio. You're listening to Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, also author, also yoga teacher, and Howard Van Ice, the author of Yoga for Better Balance. We'll be right back. So Howard von Ice, you and I have both taught yoga for many years. And as you know, when you are a yoga teacher, you give people cues. In other words, you give them things to think about and little suggestions and tips that help them balance. Now, once a week, I teach a private lesson in balance with a client and the reason that she asked me to help her work on her balance was that years ago, she fell and broke her shoulder. She, mm -hmm. she understands. It's like she knows, <laughs> you know, what can happen if you don't have good balance. So here are a few tips that everyone can use to have better balance. The first thing, and this actually comes from Tai Chi, is when you want to have better balance, you want to actually nail your feet to the ground. So what am I talking about? So not actual nails, but you want to visualize a nail. This is all visualization from your heel into the earth, from the ball of the foot into the earth, and the big toe into the earth. Now, another tip that I actually learned from a, a Tai Chi teacher is to extend your energy through your pointer finger, right? And what's interesting about this uh, is many of us have seen photographs of the picture of the Sistine Chapel, God and man, where God and man are reaching towards each other through the pointer finger. So what's so special about extending your energy through the pointer finger? When you extend your energy through the pointer finger, whether I'm just pointing with my pointer fingers or opening my hand bones or having my hands together, when you reach through the pointer finger, your energetic system goes into what's called coherence. And coherence has been studied at the Institute of Heart Math. So basically you go into a high degree of mind-body connection. So just reaching your energy through the point of your fingers. Another great tip to help you balance is to lift your belly towards the crown of the head. <laughs> and this doesn't involve like holding your belly in or holding your breath. But when you lift your belly towards the crown of the head, you actually extend your spine. And when you line up the crown of your head with your tailbone, you come into better posture. And the definition of good posture is the place where you're most biomechanically efficient. And then finally, I'm coming up with some other tips that I give when I'm cues when I'm helping people balance is to fix your gaze. So if you do a little experiment, if you just look all around in all directions, if you're looking around, you absolutely lose your balance, but, or your balance is definitely affected. But if you look straight ahead of you about six feet, and in yoga, we call this your drishti, right? Your, your focal point. So you fix your gaze, you look at one thing, <laughs> your eyes don't move. And by fixing your gaze, that helps you balance. So Howard Van Nuys, the author of Yoga for Better Balance, do you have some other little tips or tricks that people can use to help with their balance? Yeah, so um, I know there's many ways to look at the feet. And I, I've tried you know, various different um, cues over the years. And yeah. the, the one that I like the most um, and the one that I teach is uh, three points of the feet. So you had uh, mentioned um, two points, but I, I use a third. So I use the center of the heel, uh, the place where the big toe inserts into the ball of foot, which I call the big toe mound, and where the baby toe inserts uh, into the ball of foot, the baby toe mound. So there you have three points. And then um, to use those three points, 
as a, a place to ground into the floor equally um, is, is a really good clue. Um, I also like to have people um, who are challenged by their balance to stand in front of a wall or have a chair next to them where they can put their hand on it for some support or balance. Sometimes we use each other to do that. Um, uh, also, I think the core is really important too. So, um, you know, you talked about alignment and lifting the stomach towards the head, you know, to make sure the torso is right over the hips and the posture like uh, tree pose, for example. But, you know, there's many standing postures and there's many ways to work with balance. So that's not always possible, you know, depending on the posture that you're in. So like if you're in a posture like eagle pose or Garudasana, your torso is not going to be right over your hips, um, but the spine needs to be aligned anyways. Um, so that connection to the floor. And then also I like to um, take a, a posture like uh, Utkatasana, chair pose, or a half squat where people can really feel their feet against the floor um, and then mirror that when they start to get to the, the more um, challenging uh, uh, balance postures. So those are cues that I like to share with people for help and just to be mindful, you know, as they go through their day, you know, uh, I had mentioned stress earlier, or if you're distracted, it's easy to to fall down. You know, a couple of years ago, I was out in my backyard and I was attacked by an evil hose, water garden hose, and, <laughs> and I, I fell down. <laughs> Fortunately, I was able to get my hands in front of my face um, and I came that close to the floor, but uh, to the ground, but I was distracted. I wasn't watching what I was doing. So just being present, you know, we teach that in yoga, but it's important in everyday life as well. Great information. Yeah. And I was out kind of along those lines. I was out walking my dog one day and a neighbor dog who happens to love my dog, you know, came and just leapt on us. And it was like one minute I was standing and the next I was on the ground. Yeah. And this is what we're talking about with balance is that a lot of times when you start to fall, it happens before you're even conscious of it. Right. Yep. Yeah. So you want to really train your nervous system and train your body so that when you start to fall, <laughs> that the the unconscious parts of you that you've trained through your balance training can kick in. Now, in my case, when the dog jumped on me, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the asphalt, right? Yep, yep. But, but there again, because I am healthy and my muscles and my bones are healthy, then I didn't break anything, right? Yeah, you're fortunate, yes. Yeah, very fortunate. Now, um, Howard Van Ice, the author of Yoga for Better Balance, how does balance training improve our core? Because so many people think, oh, to improve my core, I need to do Pilates. <laughs> that, that's a funny question. <laughs> the Pilates part, I won't get into that. Yes, <laughs> but, okay. So look, uh, all, and you probably know, all movement starts at your core and your core is the center of your body. Um, and, you know, uh, let's define the core. It's, it's your abdominals, it's your back, it's your side bodies, it's all through here. And every movement begins from there, whether it's standing or sitting or walking or almost every yoga posture we do, isn't this is involved. And if this isn't strong, if this isn't toned, then the rest is not gonna work very well. Simple as that. Great answer. And when you do balance poses, you're getting the front and the back of the body working together, right? Absolutely. So there's that, that not only does the core have to be strong in order to have a good balance, but doing balanced postures and things to improve your balance will improve the strength of your core. So it works both ways. For sure. Now, as you know, and I'm sure you would, and I agree, when, when I'm teaching, I'm always thinking about who am I teaching, right? So I'm not gonna teach my 70 year olds, you know, standing big toe pose, right? <laughs> Which is the pose where you stand on one leg, grab your big toe and extend it out, right? right. You know, not Maybe not first thing, right? But one of the philosophical discussions as a yoga teacher is, do you hold on to a wall? Do you hold on to chair? Or do you just make everybody do cold turkey and stand in the middle of the room to learn their balance? What What is your thoughts on this subject? 
Yeah, that's a really great question. And um, <clears throat> one of uh, my senior teachers said, we have to make the postures fit the person, not the person fit the postures. And um, as I work with an aging population, um, I, I don't want anybody getting hurt. That's my number one priority. You know, we're here to make people's lives better, not cause them injuries because they can't do something that I ask them to do. That would be terrible. So I need to make the postures fit my students. And the idea of using a wall or a door or a chair or a piece of furniture or even each other, uh, I think is essential and critical and important. And I think it also adds interest. I mean, I, I think one of the great gifts uh, of BKS Iyengar was the concept of using props, uh, uh, the concept of using blocks and straps and chairs and other devices that help us understand what the posture is about to make it safer and make it more accessible. What's the point of doing a posture if you're straining to do that posture or you're risking your health? That doesn't make sense to me at all. Great answer. And, you know, I would have, let's say I'm teaching an older population, I'm teaching them chair, uh, sorry, tree pose. I might start with them having their hand on a chair and starting in a beginner version where you lift the ankle off, you know, one foot barely above the ankle. And then as they get more confident, go from, because you're using the chair for partly for proprioception, which is knowing where you are in space. So one hand on the chair and then two fingers under the chair and then one finger on the chair. So you're Great. not really leaning and then slowly reaching both arms up. I like that, Catherine. I, I do that at the wall where I have people start with their fingertips on the wall, then I have just one hand and just one finger. So very similar to what you're doing. And I, I, I like what you're doing with the chair and the finger. I'm gonna do that in my class. Okay, there, there we can all learn from each other. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, Howard Van Nuys, what are some lifestyle tips for improving balance and reducing the risk of a fall? Right. So we've been talking about yoga and we've been talking about various exercises and things that we do in class. But in our home, um, there's many things that we can do to prevent a fall. So some simple things, you know, making sure that the pathway between the kitchen and the master bedroom are clear. You know, there aren't the kids' toys or the grandkids' toys or other things on the floor um, that we're using non-slip mats in the kitchen and in the bathtub um, that um, we check our shoes. So, um, you know, we get comfortable with our shoes and the heels can start to wear one direction way too much or the toes or one side of the shoe wears too much or maybe they're not even supportive to begin with. So our gait is everything. We talked about how important your foot is against the ground. And if you're not starting off um, in a, even yeah, uh, on balance, then you're going to uh, uh, increase your chance of a fall because you're not getting the proper support underneath your feet. So look at your shoes. Um, also, the way that you sleep. So um, a big issue for many people is that they like to sleep on their stomach. And what that does is it turns the head this way and it causes a lot of disruption in the spine or the spine to be out of alignment and you're sleeping like that all night long and you wake up and a lot of people who sleep on their stomach end up with back problems because the spine is out of alignment and the hips are out of alignment. So it's really important that um, you look at how you sleep. If you're a stomach sleeper, I, I encourage you to start sleeping on your side or on your back uh, instead. Um, so those are some simple things that people can do. Um, also yearly, you know, you earlier in our conversation you talked about the vestibular system. It's really important, especially as we age, um, to get our ears and eyes checked annually or however frequently your healthcare practitioner recommends. Th these are simple things that we can do to help uh, from a lifestyle perspective. Great information. And I would also add to this is it's really critical to resolve foot issues. So yes. So for example, many of us, as we age, I, I have, for example, a Morton's neuroma on my left foot, which is actually a tumor on the end of the nerve. <laughs> I thank God that doesn't hurt anymore, but there's plantar fasciitis and many people with diabetes lose their feeling in their feet. Yeah. And so if you have any foot issues whatsoever, whether it's plantar fasciitis or Morton's neuroma, um, or you have diabetes and you're losing the feeling in your feet, 
it's really critical for your balance that you do whatever is necessary to fix your feet, right? And another practical um, suggestion that I actually gave my client who I help with balance is there's a little device called yoga toes. So yeah, Howard Van Ice, we're both yoga fans. So we know all about yoga. So there's something called yoga toes. And basically these are fancy toe separators. They're gel toe separators. So that if you've got pain in your feet, let's say you're watching a movie, you just put on your, or you're sitting at your desk, put on your toe separators and it's gonna spread your toes and open up the fascia and the connective tissue in your feet. And they're incredibly beneficial for relieving foot pain, <laughs> right? Yeah, and I, I want to add to this, um, if I could, in, in that, especially for people who have diabetes, you know, and they have uh, a lack of sensitivity in their feet, and that's because the blood supply is not getting there. Um, and nerves start to die, um, or potentially. And um, so you can also think about how important, especially for type 2 diabetes, how, how important lifestyle is. And, you know, the, the practice of yoga or any physical activity will also improve circulation through your body and improve your, your insulin resistance. So it, it, it's important not only for the practice uh, uh, of improving the feet, but the overall body. Uh, and, the, and the function of the overall body. So doing yoga or some physical activity will definitely improve what's happening in your circulation, which will help improve what's happening in your feet. Yeah, great information. Because if you can't feet your, feel your feet, you will absolutely have problems with your balance. Absolutely. And with that, let's take another break and listen to a commercial sponsor from our here at UK Health Radio, Catherine Kerrigan, Howard Van Ice, and we're talking with you today about how to have better balance. So Howard Van Nuys, you and I are both yoga fans and yoga master teachers. And yet other people maybe have never done yoga. Maybe they think I'm too old to start or whatever their story is, or I'm too tight. How does improving our mind-body connection improve our balance? Yeah, great question. So first of all, um, you, you, you've you asked a loaded question because you're never too old to start yoga, as you know, no matter what age you are, whether you're 20 or you're 70 or even 80. I mean, there's yoga classes for every age group and every style. And, and even within various styles of yoga, there's uh, various levels of yoga. So, um, you know, if you're interested in yoga and you haven't uh, explored it and you want to age is not a factor it's just a simple finding the right teacher for the right age group so the right class for the right person with the right conditions and even then you know you you might have to try a few different classes with a few different teachers before you you find somebody so uh, could you repeat your your initial question for me yeah which is how does improving our mind body connection improve our balance I mean, some of my clients, when I work with them on their balance, the issue is they're just in their head so much, right? Yeah. In, in our society, everybody's thinking or they're on the internet, watching YouTube videos or listening to podcasts and they're right. not really connected to their body. And when we lose our mind-body connection, you're going to lose your balance. Absolutely. So in the in the uh, West, we like to think of having a head and a body, right? And in the East, we think of mind body as almost one word. And what's happening here is also happening here. What's happening here is happening here. So the practice of yoga brings that together. It, it, it is the, I think, the original mind body practice um, that helps us to get present in the moment. So when we feel something that's happening in our body, 
we're not cut off from it. We can say, oh, this is happening in, in my body and I need to do this, that, or the other thing to help with that. Or vice versa, if something's happening in my head, oh, I'm feeling really stressed out or I'm having trouble thinking what's going on for me. Uh, I'm also noticing I have an upset stomach or I'm feeling some anxiety or, uh, or I have a lot of energy and I don't know what to do with it. Um, uh, we can attend to that or at least become aware of it and conscious of it. And I think that consciousness is the first step, is becoming aware of what's happening, and then we can begin to work with it. And yoga is just a, uh, has a myriad of tools for, for helping us become present and conscious from you know, meditating to breathing to the physical practice. And if you're so inclined to the philosophical study uh, of yoga. So um, there's a lot of tools to help us become present and uh, be in our mind body a little bit more. Um, so I, I'm hoping I'm answering your question for you. Yes. Uh, so I have to share a story. So I don't know, it, recently, a couple months ago, I was carrying my laundry basket down the stairs in the dark. And I was also carrying my computer and my cell phone <laughs> <laughs> going down the stairs in the dark. And I remember thinking to myself, I sure hope this yoga stuff works out for me. <laughs> yeah. And then I was telling one of my yoga, yoga students this, and they were they said, this is like a safety video, right? But it is true that one of the places that we tend to fall a lot or slip is on the stairs. So how can we improve our balance going up and down stairs? Yeah, so first of all, you know, uh, you have to make sure the path is clear, you know, make sure that there's a handrail for you. And if there isn't, maybe one could be installed if balance is a critical issue for you. But that movement of bringing the leg up and down, we want to have flexibility and we want to have strength. And there's so many postures in yoga that help us do that very thing. We talked about some of the thing, some of the postures like um, uh, um, Utkatasana, chair pose, or doing a half squat, or even just Tadasana, just standing straight up, building the strength and flexibility in your body will give you the confidence to climb stairs and to come downstairs. And just the very act of climbing stairs. Like when I go someplace and I see a big flight of stairs, I'm excited because I know I'm going to go challenge myself on those stairs. You know, when I get out of the um, uh, public transportation going into San Francisco, there's always a big flight of stairs. I'm going, great. I'm going to go challenge myself and build strength in my body. So uh, I might be a little weird that way, but I like to do that because it, it is challenging and it gives uh, strength to my body. So, you know, just finding stairs and enjoying them. Walk walk when you can instead of taking the elevator or the escalator, you know. Um, so there's lots of ways, but when it comes down to it, we need to have the strength and flexibility in our body in order to, to safely go up and down stairs. Great advice. And one simple little trick that I work on a lot when I'm teaching balance is I'll have, again, have a yoga block on the floor and have people and I'll time us, you know, we stand on one leg on the yoga block for 60 seconds. And then I have you move the other leg, just like you would be going up and down the stairs, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And if you uh, re recall on the front cover of my book, the, the model standing on not one but two blocks that is so impressive and yeah. you know there was an engineer who explained it more because it always looks so impressive to stand on a block but by standing on a block you're actually increasing the surface area right so there's more support when you're standing on a block yeah, and it's also something that, that people aren't used to doing. So they become more present. They become more connected with their mind and body. It's like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I always stand on the ground. I take that for granted because I've been doing it for 50, 60, 70, or 80 years. And, and I don't even think about it. So when you ask me to stand on the ground, okay, great, I'm standing on the ground. But when you ask me to stand on a block, I never do that. So I have to be very, very conscious and very aware as I do that. And I also think that pe because of that, people get slightly better arches in their feet when they stand on the block as well, especially if they're giving attention to the big toe mound, the baby toe mound in the center of the heel plate. Um, so they have that better arch. And when you have a good arch, you're going to have better balance. 
So it's a great exercise. And it's also building strength because you're standing on one leg, as you mentioned. Now, you and I are teachers of yoga. And as you know, when you teach, you think about the sequence. In other words, you don't start by you know, standing on your head. Maybe you do, but I don't. <laughs> I don't <laughs> Probably <know>. not. <laughs> so what are the best sequences or best poses to learn to sequence in order to balance? In other words, like what's the easiest, what's the hardest? Yeah, so um, so in our book, um, in, in the back of the book, for people who have never done you know, people who are sedentary or away from activity or away from yoga, um, we have a series of simple exercises that people can do. A lot of them are start in a chair, but let's say that that's not necessary for you. I really like uh, starting with a posture like Tadasana, mm -hmm. um, which uh, brings the body into alignment and we can feel that grounding into the earth um, with our feet um, and identify those three points that we talked about. So that would be a, a good starting place. Downward facing dog pose is a good starting place. Um, also for that reason, you know, we're getting connected to the earth and um, downward facing dog pose has so many wonderful benefits. Uh, stretches out our entire body, um, builds strength in our entire body. Um, so, uh, and that's just two of the benefits, you know, from teaching there's like 80 benefits of doing dog pose. It's just a wonderful posture. Um, so I also like to bring people onto the floor, onto their back, bring their knee in towards their chest and stretch out their lower back a little bit, stretch their hips a little bit. Um, this would be very, you, you asked before about climbing stairs. So this would be a gentle way of building some flexibility uh, in the hips and the lower back for climbing the stairs. Um, also um, uh, a posture where we put a strap on the foot and extend the leg straight up while you're laying on your back. Um, is uh, something that I like to do with people as a warm up. And then once they're starting to get warmed up, I like to bring them into triangle pose or Parshvakanasana side angle stretch. And then into the beginning level um, uh, uh, balanced postures like uh, tree pose, for example, um, or uh, when I teach eagle pose, Garudasana, I like to take it apart. I like to teach the arms first and then the legs, and then I put it together for people. Um, Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose. Um, and of course, all these can be done in the center of the room or they could be done at the wall. They could be done by yourself or with a partner. And there's great variations, which I go into in my book uh, about these postures. Dancer pose, Natarajasana is also another great balanced posture. So working up into the more complex balanced postures. And then of course, on the other side, we wanna cool down also. So the same things that we've done to warm up, we could use to cool down uh, as well before coming into Shavasana, which as you know, is probably one of the most important postures of all, um, where we can rest and integrate the benefits of our practice. Wonderful. Howard Van Ice, author of Yoga for Better Balance. Any final thoughts for our audience? Yeah, uh, in the words of Nike, just do it. <laughs> just do it. You know, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Simple as that. So, and, and you can start at any age. And if you have uh, physical issues or even emotional issues um, that prevent you from going to a class, you can seek out a qualified teacher and work one on one with people, uh, one on one with the teacher until you're ready to join a class. So yoga can be uh, made to fit you wherever you are, whatever you're doing at any stage of your life. You've been listening to The Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, author, and yoga teacher. You can find out more about me at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. Our guest today has been Howard Von Ice author of Yoga for Better Balance, and you can find out more about Howard Von Ice and his wonderful work at his website, letsdoyoga.com. And remember, when you work on your balance, you are preventing injury, you're delaying death, literally, you're working your core, you're strengthening your joints, you're improving your mind-body connection, and you're coming home to your body. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time.